is that Bewitched Dagger. Also on the opposite side, Breastplate is still very strong. So there's always the chance that Breastplate Glyph, but we've not seen actually any by the Dragon so far. Lazbro oh, now 2v2 because Dart is a show. These teams, at, at least to say, exact same for the Jade Dragons. They go to the Poseidon Mamon on her once again. Ravens, their only adjustment is swipe away from the Tiamat, and they decide to go with the Thought this time. Do you think that that change coupled along with Hurry Wind Swap is enough to help the Ravens throughout the, their struggling, I would say struggling mid-game more than anything. Yeah, I think Myth highlights it perfectly. I think Thardes was getting bullied that game, and it was against a Tiamat. This game, Thoth, opposite side of the coin, a lot of threat in mid, kill potential, poke, good clear. Maybe not great jungle clear, but good enough, where if Dardes is in the same spot he is this game that he was la last game, it's going to be a lot different. He's going to be behind instead of ahead. So I like the change of the Thoth pick, but it's a good highlight that Laz picks the counter pick in Fenrir. They also have the Kepri to really help Laz dive. And then also, Atlas buff, the power reduction that you get in the ult, maybe that comes into play when you're diving actually into this Thoth in late game. Maman going to have to dive. Fenrir going to have to dive. Maybe that is just enough of a reduction for Atlas to actually be a backline peeler, because before, he had some tools, but it wasn't enough to be really great on the backline peeling. But now maybe that 3% really puts him over the edge and he can actually, you know, really help his backline. I think it's a good point to bring up the Atlas buff that came through with his ultimate. A lot of times you just see that ultimate, drop it down, let it rip a little bit after. But now you get a little bit of extra benefit from leaving it on the ground for longer, as opposed to, you know, kind of just rip cording it more than anything is that, as you mentioned, power reduction goes up from the 2 to 3% per tick from that ultimate. So really going to come in handy in these late game team fights as you start getting the real big power spikes come on for these mid laners specifically. So I think we're going to be keeping an eye on these mages more than anybody in, the, in kind of this early mid game. And I like the Ravens comp more this game than I did last game. But when it comes to those late game fights, we kind of saw the weakness of the Ravens comp last game where they just didn't have great CC. There was like slows, roots, silences, stuff like that. But there was no Kepri pull. There was no Sylvanas ult. There was no Fenrir ult where it's just, if this guy gets CC, kill him. And I think that's something that's big to highlight. Laz actually dashes in the tower. It doesn't matter too much, but a little bit of poke. And the, the Ravens didn't really, you know, fix that issue. So I'm still a little worried about that Ravens late game. See Hurry Wind stepping up to the shield buff. It's only level two. Mike's gonna go for the pull. Make sure to secure that one. And I think important to, to bring up the small change that did come to the shield buff. Less protections you get per level from it now makes it maybe not as valuable, still a valuable buff to have. Maybe not the end all be all. Dardes used the dash to go to scream. Get a little bit of extra distance to dash out. Laz is here. Even turning back around because Laz was on the way. Stun is good. He's dead. Just through the unchained and the brutalized on after. No silence to stop it this time. It's first blood for the dragons in mid. And Scream actually loses beads there also. Gets taken down. He's getting back with no tier two item now. And you look at the other side. When Laz gets his back off, he's going to have this Jotun's actually a lot faster. He's invading that. Uh, the. the, sh the Back camp, getting that red buff augment, taking that away. Actually, Scream does end up getting the tier two, but still, Jones is going to be finished earlier. Mine pulls back, hurries a frenzy from both supports to keep the fight going. Coast has already used his beads, and he's going to keep going aggressive. Jump in to hit Hurry with the, the stun. Gets stopped by Zapman. Infill still there, though, as Coast gets one. Zapman uses his beads. It's now two versus one, and health bars are similar on both sides. And well, it wouldn't be a Coast kill if you didn't get a little bit of laughs after. And the on her laugh on top of it. Really terrifying laugh. You don't want to get killed by on her and then laughed at by him. Because you know, Coast is going to do it again. He's going to go for another solo, and he's going to laugh at you again. Well, not another solo. Wait, he didn't solo in game one, did he? No, no he didn't solo, he got the solo. Yeah. He's going to go for a solo for the first time, not again. And he's going to laugh at you. He didn't laugh if he gets a solo kill or not. Just any kill huh. that Coast Yeah, actually doesn't matter. That's going to be a solo laugh. That's just the Coast mentality. Doesn't matter what. Doesn't matter if, if he 5v1 to person. If it's that man or if it's your dual lane, he's gonna laugh. Nika about half HP. Push back under the tier one tower. Still just gonna be fine. A little bit of the early woes of the Poseidon up against Chalk Ama. Can't really clear as efficiently. Not a whole lot of kill for himself. But we do have level five now for Lazbrin. I'm wondering where he puts that priority on this Fenrir. Do you go back to mid lane, try and keep Venenu down? Or, or do you go over to the dual lane now that you know that you have a set of beads away from their carry?
Yep, you go to this duo lane and Hurry cannot play up anymore. Zap has no beats and the Fenrir is here. And Capriol. That man's huh. used his jump, but forces the to double get a kill. No, no, as he picks up Hurry when that's gonna be two for the Jade Dragons. And who's gonna get it? Lasbro will. Three and O oh for the jungler of the Jade Dragons. Venenu charges up ultimate. Dart is in danger, but Venenu canceled the ultimate. And Dart has used his dash to stay inside the scream, avoids the stun. But can he get out? Because now he's used all of his mobility. Venenu goes in with the dash, but misses he's it. So slippery. He needs the ultimate to get this kill. We'll let it the rip. Trade. But it's a one for one trade because Nika shows up and slams the Kraken right in the screen. And a lot of time used during that entire fight, also. Dual side of the map getting stomped by the Dragons. Mid side, a little bit of favor towards this, this Raven's comp. The Thoth now actually up a level, which when dual lane is going this bad, Jungle is going this bad, you need a lane. And as Myth highlighted on the desk, even in these late game fights, it's on Venenu. But that that pressure is on him even earlier now, because right now, down literally everywhere, it is just on Venenu. And that kill took much longer than it, it probably did. needed to for, for the Ravens to, to finally take down Dardes. Holy! Lasbro baits of beads at a scream, didn't even have ultimate available, uses jump to get away from Haddix. That is, that is a fear mindset that Lazarus just put into screen. Beadsing under tier one tower without ultimate up. Yeah, that was a lot of damage. I'm pretty sure, can, can we actually see what he's maxing if he, if he actually is looking to max the three? He is looking to max the three. I figured, but I wanted to make sure. There's so much damage here and actually damage. Gold Fury getting low. Gold Fury down to about a quarter HP and no one on the Ravens even aware that this is happening or they saw and they said, well, there's not much we could do about it. It's now 2,600 gold this lead for the lead. Jade Dragons. This is a fast pace. And, uh, and that's saying a lot considering game one was also pretty speedy for both these teams. Five and one at the combination of kills for the Jade Dragons. Their only death coming to Dardes, who, again, took so long to die that he was able to bait the enemy team forward, get the Ravens a little deeper in territory, and set up for Nika to pick up a kill. And if you're looking at the, the dual lane right now, both Mike and Coast had already started stacking. And on the opposite side, Hurry is just starting to stack. And Zapman is still not stacking. So you're gonna have a huge lead scream actually gets a dash on the middle lane. Goes to the screen, dash. but he jumped out too early in a camera ray from Hurry when we'll make sure to secure that kill. The Highlander Ravens find their second pick, but once again, it's on to the mid laner. This Maman, as we've mentioned, struggled in the early game, still struggling for this time, but all the kills the Ravens have is just on that mid laner. You look across the board, everyone else is ahead on the Dragons. I think you're happy to put behind this Maman, but trading out everybody else being behind for just this Maman being behind is not a good trade. Yes, she's going to be a very strong late game character, but this mid game is going to be dominated by Poseidon, dominated by Fenrir, dominated by Onher. Venu be forced. Venu does dash away. Curry picks oh, up no. Coast. And now Hurry's got to try and see if he can run. Oh, from Dardes will get the knockup. Joe jumps in, but he misses the impale. Hurry can have a little bit of extra time on life, but Dardes, even going down twice, still has plenty of damage and follow-up to get a kill of his own. The Jade Dragons now with six on the board. And this is not going to get any easier for the Ravens. This, this comp that the Dragons have, if it gets ahead, it is very intimidating. Fenrir pulls beads and then punishes you. On her pulls beads, punishes you. Nika on the Poseidon pulls beads, punishes you. I mean, even Dardes, who's behind, can pull beads and can punish you just because that character does do enough damage. And he's, at the worst of it, he's even right now. And that's supposed to be their lead for the Ravens. Now, so we hit a bit of that lull. I, I do want to highlight the rotation that Coast had made for that kill because going for the Goal Fury, that'll make sense. Five, six minutes in, go for the objective, great. But seeing Coast at level 8 rotating to enemy green buff this early, uh, this is kind of what we expected with him coming over with Mike, you know, what they were talking about. We want that extra aggression and lead. Seeing Coast rotation gives maybe a bit more confidence now to the Jade Dragons, their fans, and maybe even some of the doubters out there saying, yeah, this is a team that is going to play in your face. They're going for a purple buff in fade now, stolen away by the Jade Dragons. Coast and Mike just keep playing that W key. And they actually lost a little bit of this wave over in duo also. So not just that purple buff, also a couple melee minions. And so far, this this game has been all dragons. And they're not slowing down. They're still looking for invades. Gold Fury spawning in about a minute. 
Yes, Frenzy was just used, but they still have a lot of objective damage with Coast. Yes, their secure's not great. Yes, there's always the risk of the thought, especially being level 11. But it's still just walking into this left side jungle, if you're the Ravens, is an impossible feat with how just scary ahead the dragons are. So if you are Scream in this case, now seeing that your dual lane really can't hold up into a fight, Haddix is still a little bit behind, mid lane's kind of even. If you're Scream in this case, is this a sit back and we just got to kind of farm style a game, or, or is this one maybe where you want to see Scream try and get active in one of these other two lanes? The, the problem is he's playing Alma. It's not a character that really gets active. It's a character that wants to play around kind of her team and play around objective, but when you're level nine, down a level in jungle, when the enemy support is a level up on you, there's no no really getting involved anyway, let alone if you're playing like an actual jungler that can kind of gank lanes. I mean, at least Fenrir who's behind can maybe pull a beads and then punish it later. Alma really doesn't do that. So I, I guess at this point, you're just kind of at a farming, you know, standstill if you're the Ravens. You can't really fight anymore. And, and the late game isn't getting any better. If you do go late, there's a Maman that's just scaling every point. Speaking of beads, pull. It's a jungle, jungle straight out. The screen's gonna try and pull through. Darty's just dealt through for immunity and still goes in for wow. the kill. He might lose his life here for it. Kept it will go down. No, it's a quick revive by PBM to keep the mid laner alive. What a trade out that the dragons get. They take down Scream. They pull a set of beads from him all the while. And they pick up a kill without losing Dardis. And Dardis is able to actually farm out a little bit more before getting this back off. He's gonna be backing for those beads. Actually didn't have those beads for this early portion of the game, something maybe we should have highlighted, but started that blink. Maybe that's why he got punished a couple of those times, but now backing for those beads, the Maman is gonna be able to threaten a, a lot more. Now they have maybe three lanes they can even play through. And, and if you're a Ravens fan, or if you're on the Ravens right now, there's not really much you can do to come back. Maybe out secure a gold fury, maybe try to trade Pyro for gold, but the Dragons are putting pressure on this purple buff. Gold Fury up. They've done this before where they kind of pretend to pressure purple and then back up to Gold Fury. And it kind of looks like they're setting up something here already. Coast is going to stand his ground. Purple does get secured by Zap, but it might be losing a couple of people for it. Or he went tries to dash away. Last, we're going to chase him with a brutalizing Coast with the ult. will take him down. You get purple, but you lose your support. Now, after Zapman still has beads and ultimate. We'll be safe for the time being, but the Dragons will loop right back over to Fury. Looking for a little pick on a screen. Beads, or, uh, beads down, dash forced out. No Gold Fury pull yet. I, th I think it's fair to play this a little bit slower. Play for your back camp, play for your purple buff. Get, there's a bunch of farm to be getting. So I'm fine with them going for this and playing this a little bit slower, but you should be getting this Gold Fury somewhat soon. You want to keep pushing that lead. Yes, 3,500 gold is a lot, but it's 12 minutes into the game. we got to start spiking that a little bit more. And a great place to start is this this beacon spawn at 12 minutes. Beacon for the Dragons for now, nearly capped. Hurry when needs to step up, forces Dart is off it for the time being. Cap isn't moving much, but all it takes is one step off the platform. And the Jade Dragons will now get one objective for this from Lazbra. Right side of that. Now Scream rotating in. It's a two level lead for Lazbra in the jungle. He might have to take this 1v1. Ult's traded for the two junglers. Jade Dragons, though, happy to take those trades. Look at the amount of CDR Lazarus got in Kin. That ultimate's coming up much sooner than Screams. But even at this point, Lazarus' ult is so valuable, and Screams is really not that valuable. So maybe not the worst case scenario for, for the Ravens. Maybe there is, you know, worse things. Obviously, Scream dying is, is a worst case scenario there, but at least there's a little bit pressure off from you. No threat from this Fenrir for another 30, 40 seconds. Gold Fury is up, especially with that. I, I think that's a big highlight to have. No Fenrir and Gold Fury is up. It makes us pulling this Gold Fury just a little bit more risky. A little fight grouping on the left side of the map. Stun on Coast. They're going to jump away. Zatman goes with the ult, but it's Aegis out by Coast. Banner used. They need a little bit more damage. Ult from Hurry's not enough, but Scream will keep up the chase. Dashian gets one, but all the while, there's a breakout fight on the side of the jungle, and Mike gets another revive on Dardis. Made a punish not enough, but needs multiple Scream shots, he does get that one. That's two for the Highland Ravens, about to be three because Lazarus collapsed on it. Mike, now the last one, it's going to be four versus one, but Nika is on the way. If you dash too far in, there's going to be a Bob Kraken dash. waiting for you, but it's only going to hit Haddix. Not enough damage to take down the solo laner, and Haddix is sustaining a lot back through Tier 1 Tower under fire. Screen pulled back, and Nika takes him down, Zapman, and Haddix has got to run. Haddix. 
bolts out through the jungle while Zapman tries to run down lane. Make sure Zap gets out here. They do actually have the ultimate from Kepri not available, so a little risky here. Actually, Nika taking tower feeds. Aegis Force Mike also going down. Nika getting dashed on. No damage is confirmed yet. You need Maybe one. he squeaks out. You need one. But he had one hieroglyphic shot and he missed it. And that knockback from the tidal wave keeps Nika alive. Haddix just gets pushed a little too far back, but. If you want to see the aftermath of that fight, I think the charts are the best way to reflect that. That was over 3,000 in favor of the Dragons going in. A thousand swing for the Ravens is great. But now once more, an answer back from the Dragons with Pyromancer. Yeah, and that little comeback you just had is, is almost mitigated by that Pyro pull and the Pyro confirmed by the Dragons. Haddock speaking over, making sure Fire Pyro's not getting pulled right now. But I think that fight happens because when you have these mages in solo, you don't have that same ability to use TP. You go beat Aegis. So what are you doing? You're pushing lanes, backing, and at best, you're walking over after that. But if you're playing Warriors, you have the ability to go TP. You go blink TP. You could actually rotate to these fights and look for those big engagements, and that's what happened. But now Fire Giant getting pulled. Two and a half, two thirds left on the Fire Giant. The fight's going to be breaking out. Hurry's jumped in, that ultimate's Frenzy. had a couple of important people. Fire is low, Haddix takes down Lasbro, and the Dragons do get fired. Dardes able to take down one, Coast low, but Scream even lower. Coast takes him down with the help of his team, and now the Sneaky Chase in. Hurry win, goes to the pull, but comes up empty-handed. up soon. Mike waiting for the root to try and grab. Hurry does end up landing in the dash after a tidal wave, makes sure then he goes nowhere to go. Dardes with a second kill in the fight. And now a push on a tier one tower. Fire around the other four of the Jade Dragons. And their push will stop in mid. Could be a call for Fury instead. Gold Fury available after that Fire Giant. Three dead on the Raven's side. But a 5k lead right now. Not a great ability to push there. I think it's fine. You know, play this a little slower. They're going to have a good push out here. Get this primal. Get your big power spikes. But in that fight, we kind of see the strength of this Maman. No relics on Venenu. He just gets one shot, just wiped off the map, and there's nothing he can really do. And that's kind of like that that breaking point the Dragons were waiting for. Yes, the Fenrir dominated early, but they don't need Fenrir damage anymore. Will he st still do damage? Obviously, yes, he's building full damage. But you see at this point in the game, this Maman is starting to turn it on. She's going to be able to be threatening just about anyone. And we saw last game, the alternate timeline, something that allowed him to have that second health, or second life, and he didn't even have to use it last game. Now the Jade Dragons, once again, in perfect control of lead over 6,000 gold up for the Jade Dragons. Erwin trying to find an ounce of farm anywhere because he's three levels down to Mike, who is tied with nearly everybody or ahead on the side of the Ravens, level 15. Crazy. Just got that compassion online. 17 minutes in the game is a really fast pace for your support to finish their starter. Yeah, usually that's almost like the mid laner pace of getting level levels 15 around 17, but this game, Mike is actually the one getting there, has that massive spike, and opts for the Relic Dagger also, allowing them to kind of just go for those objectives and kind of just risk it. Oh, worst thing that happens, we have to drop it and my Relics will be back up again in 50 seconds. And I'm also this Kepri, so we have a lot of survivability in these fights. And right now, Dragons, four strong and left, Lazma pushing down right. And the Ravens really aren't here to contest left. If I'm not mistaken, Relic Dagger did get a buff this patch too. I think, what is it now? 50 seconds on the Relic cooldown with that? An absolutely crazy item. And, and do you think that now maybe gives not only more incentive for supports to, to pick this item up in general, but maybe also to go towards some of the glyphs of this item out first? Yeah, I, I think for sure. Unfortunately, Eldritch Dagger, not really a great early game glyph. It, it reveals wards. It gives you those extra protections when you use your relics. Something that scales a little bit better when vision is more important around objectives, when the, that percent protection increase is a little bit more important. But for these early fights, Bewitch Dagger, the Witchblade iteration of uh, Relic Dagger, reducing that auto attack speed, important at all points. It actually scales worse because you get so much attack speed on these hunters in the late game. So something that you could look for is that Bewitch Dagger. Also on the opposite side, Breastplate is still very strong. So there's always the chance that Breastplate Glyph, but We've not seen actually any by the Dragons so far. Lasbro now 2v2 because Dardis has shown up the knock of his scream and it's still an insane amount of damage going up against them. Haddock's able to use the torrent to get away, but he's got Lasbro and Dardis hot on his heels. Meanwhile, there's a death on the opposite side as Zapman fell down, giving another kill over to the 
Jade Dragon. They're pushing mid. Well, it's two. The dual lane of the Dragon's pushing up mid lane. And with these wins on both the opposite sides of the, or both side lanes of the map, mid can just be pressured by Coast and Mike for free. A lot of safety with that Kepri ult. But instead of continuously pushing it down, they back up, they go for this pyro. They're trying to get strong for this Fire Giant. Gold Fear is also coming up. Nobody picked up Bomb. Hopefully somebody goes back and picks that up. But still a lot of stuff on the map that the Dragons kind of wanted to get, rather than risk it in mid. And actually it looks like they're not going to be picking it up. They're leaving it. Mike can't. Mike's looking at him going, guys, he's begging. I can't, I can't grab that. I've got double chalice in pocket. I, somebody, maybe Nika goes and picks it up. He's zooming. Oh, Does this is going to be close. Time? Ooh, that was close. Wow. He only had a few more seconds to go. But J Dragons, so they get the Runic Bomb. And important now, only one tier two tower left standing for the Ravens. We're hitting that same breakneck pace we did in game number one, though with a maybe stronger lead for the Dragons pushing in. So we'll see what they do with this Runic Bomb. Do they fall back and go Zap. to the Fire Giant? That man walks too far forward. He finds PBM, or I should say PBM spotted him. Root catches him immediately at the ultimate. Zap man, he's as good as dead. Kill over to Dardes, seven and three on the Mamon. And a full five-man grouping of the Dragons around Oni Fury. Should get that objective, no problem. And even better than the seven and three is the level 20 spike on him, on Nika. And then gonna be on Coast very, very soon. This game is getting out of hand for the Ravens. They are at a point where they need multiple mistakes from the Dragons. They can't really threaten here. Scream actually maybe even caught out. Nika finds him on the map. Okay. He's, He's just he, wasting time. Well, He's just like, wasting time. He was hiding behind a totem hoping that you wouldn't see him. <laughs> For the Jade Dragons, though, they'll send one over to distract Scream, make sure he can't go back to base. And now it will be a Fire Giant for the Jade Dragons. Last rock, honestly, just go for the kill. Wait out the ultimate. Scream still doesn't have Thoth beads. Thoth yes. this dash. Last rock on the way. 2v1. Doesn't have the distance for the dash. Still goes in for the damage and gets the Blood it. Forge. Blood Forge keeps alive for one. He damage ult from Ven. Ven has got to get this kill. You've invested so much he time. Got it. And he will do so. One for one trade. Knocks the fire off of Laz, but fires on the rest of the belt of the Jade Dragons. Haddix able to teleport under the tower with the help of his torrent. But the okay. Dragons finding a big pick over on left. Good trade up by Venendu though. Makes it a 4v4. If they want to opt to push down right, looks like they're just trying to get that last tier too, as you highlighted. There's only the one left. Might as well get that. Get your backs off, get your spikes. We have now alternate done on Dardes. Nika's got his blood soak shroud. Compassion was done on Mike six minutes ago, so he's still got that. Coast is also getting his leader's cowl. The Jade Dragons are spiking very, very hard, and, and Zatman just dashed into this. And Zatman's dead because of the dash from Mamon, chases him out with it. One for Zatman, ultimate used by Nika. Doesn't find anything this time, but Hurrywin will have his life spared as the Jade Dragons continue to push their lead. I mean, we're breaking 14, nearly 15,000 gold that the Jade Dragons have up at this point of the game. And that's a dangerous 15k. We're not at like 35, 40 minute 15k. This is 22 minutes in the game. Like, we're not even seeing six slot items yet at this point. Yeah, this is like fifth item in starter versus just four items. This is a really big difference right now. And the Jade Dragons also have that safety from that Kepri ult. So just gonna be very strong in this fight. Just pu two pushing down left, two opting to push down middle. Last coming out of base with no fire giant as he did die. But Middle Phoenix already down to a thousand health. A rooted bomb used. Try and weaken it down. Doesn't end up taking out just yet, but the dragons will make sure to grab that. Scream loses his ultimate and about 60% of his health forced back to base. So the dragons with a 3 2 split. Keep the dual lane over in duo. Impale by Coast pushes Haddix back. The rest of Jade Dragons still trying to whittle down the rest of this Phoenix's HP. Nika steps in just to help clear the wave. Good poke. The Ravens are just trying to keep poke game up, especially against Nika. His only sustain comes from his lifesteal items. Well, dual lane, it's ultimately used by Hurry Wind just to keep Coast and Mike out. The Ravens are holding firm on their defense. Holding firm indeed, but such a good amount of poke by the Dragons so far. I think right now it's kind of eyes on Venenu. If, if they're to win this, if they're to defend their Phoenixes, a lot of it relies on Venenu hitting a big ult or just getting enough poke to push back the Dragons. They have this Fire Giant to sustain, so they have a little bit, but they don't have a true healer. You see Haddock teleports in, Scream, ult on the PBM, and only 
to PBM. Coast is taking a 1v1 against Zap. Batman and winning. By the way, that's no crit for Coast and crit on Zap. That's just winning that trade out. Panic goes in with the ultimate. Lazaro pulls back. Hurry win. It's out three in the back line. And a Kraken is barely going to clip through Hurry, but it's just enough for Coast to take him down. The Jade Dragon's on their one. Menu charges ult, but with Lazaro too far, we'll cancel that one out. More good poke by Venenu, but the all in potential by the Dragons is just too much. They're able to push down left, get this left Phoenix. Middle getting threatened, Venenu ult off the mark. Now he does not have this for this middle Phoenix. Five strong here, you have Fire Giant on four. This should be slowly, but it should be confirmed by the Dragons. That Bracer nearby from Mike, that extra power afforded to the Dragons. Dart and Nika push into the jungle. Four versus five for ten more seconds. Hurry win. Frenzy available. Will have ultimate on respawn, but Dart is not going to lay that respawn a chance. But Nate <laughs> taken down by the soul spike damage afterwards. Dart gets one, making a double for the mid laner of the dragons. Hurry win is back. Picks up Lazra. Throws it towards Zap for the feed out of Laz. The dive onto the Titan for the dragons that got all five and not enough damage from the Ravens to keep them back. Dart is dashes in, but it's right into the fountain. We'll dash out, and the Dragons in 25 will go up 2-0. Miff said on desk that he did not mind the Ama Pryo again. I'm here to state, stop prioring the Ama. This Maman is doing way too much, even if it is in mid. I agree with Miff that I think she's a better jungler, but even in mid, she's doing this.